Hi, I'm Serge Rave, and I hope that you all have a very good time at Clever Bildungsgipfel. I'm sorry I can be with you on the 11-11-11, a date carefully chosen by Wolfgang Helmet, but I'll be with you through a video recording. I kept it short, so I hope you won't suffer from death by PowerPoint. The subject I'll address today is about ePortfolio in relation to individualization, personalization, and individuation. This last concept might be new to you, and I'll explain why I think it is important to take into consideration individuation when thinking about learning and ePortfolios. So, what about these three concepts of individualization, personalization, and individuation? Uh, what are the models that we can find uh, behind? Typically, individualization starts from predefined objectives. It could be a curriculum, uh, business objectives, learning objectives, and based on your profile, uh, you will adapt the content of the learning in order for you to achieve uh, the objectives. So we start from objectives and define the learning path based on the objectives, and these objectives are usually externally defined. It's not the learner who defines uh, his or her own objectives. So when you look at the kind of technology behind that, you will find things like uh, sequencing. There is even a standard uh, called simple sequencing, which define how you can uh, sequence learning modules, testing. So, for example, you pass a test, and depending on the result of the test, you will be allowed to go further in your study or not, or to have some kind of remediation. When we speak about personalization, we invert the objectives and, and the individual. Basically, it is the individual, I put here the profile, but it is the individual that defines his or her own objectives based on his interests, abilities, uh, and so the curriculum plays a less important role. So it's really about planning, acting, uh, and reflecting in order to collect the information necessary for the person to understand what the person has learned, how she has learned, and uh, how to inform further learning. With the individuation, it is slightly different. That is, the starting point is not the individual, but it is the situated individual in the community. It is the I doesn't exist independently from the we. So it is a co-individuation process or trans-individuation process. We grow together, we develop uh, together. So we are part of what we could refer as learning communities. There are a number of learning communities, a number of identities we have, a number of profiles. And it's within these communities that we grow ourselves and that we contribute to the growth of others and our uh, community. So the technologies you will find behind that, typically for individualization, you will find learning management systems that have implemented the standard I mentioned earlier, which is simple sequencing. For personalization, there is this all current about personalized uh, learning uh, environment. So instead of having a um, central system owned by the institution, each learner has his or uh, own learning platform organized around him or her self. And then uh, for individuation, we could find things like uh, e-portfolio and social learning infrastructures. I put a question mark here because the technologies for individuation in my opinion, still have to be defined. I think it is still a very powerful concept in order to go beyond what uh, we, we have today. So in terms of technology, individualization 
can accommodate with closed systems. Personalization needs open systems because you need to be able to collect number of, of resources, exchange with number of systems that cannot be predefined. Uh, so you, it is absolutely critical for personalization to have uh, fully open systems. And for individuation, what I think is necessary is what I call generative infrastructures. That is, uh, infrastructure which is creating something new, which is generating uh, novelty, which is not just a static si system, but which goes beyond what it is at a certain stage into uh, the next stage. In terms of content, uh, there is this whole discussion today you might be aware of about user-generated content. I think this is a big difference that we'll find in the systems connected to individualization. Individualization, you need to have pre-digested contents, okay, because you need to define what content you will provide if this person has not fully understood this module. Well, if it is about personalization, it will be much more about user-generated content. We invite the users to create uh, the content. Uh, the learners, the teachers, the community, so everybody is contributed to the creation uh, of content. And for the generative infrastructure, we have not just user-generated content, but user-generated context. That is, uh, it is the learner that creates his or her own context for learning. Not just the content, but the context. And for that, I want to give a quote of a student who says, you know, one thing I really liked about this course and felt was something that would be useful in other courses too, is the use of a class wiki. It was a good place to go and it was nice to be able to edit on a collaborative site and have a set page. It was also good to be able to put up interesting information and be trusted with the opportunity to administer the site. The highlights are from me. With the opportunity to administer the site. It also helped build a sense of responsibility and collective understanding. It exposed me to a lot of new ideas that I otherwise wouldn't have learned. I think this is absolutely essential that the learning infrastructure is placed into the hands uh, of the learners. You know, when, when you look at schools, when you look at universities, uh, the learning infrastructure is managed by a separate department. And so this learning infrastructure is done for the learners. My belief, and, and, and this student testimony support this belief, is that the learning infrastructure could be created and managed by the learners, or at least with uh, the learners. We need some kind of scaffolding there. Uh, so uh, sometimes it will be fully managed by a, a separate service, sometimes it will be shared management, and sometimes it will be fully managed by the learners. And uh, we, we have not applied this concept of scaffolding to learning infrastructures, and I think this is something we should really explore more consistently. So what kind of vision do we have behind individualization, personalization, and individuation? We can say that uh, individuation is something that you do to the learner or for the learner. Personalization is something that you do with the learner. Uh, and individuation is something which is done by the learners through other uh, learners. Uh, it is co-individuation, trans-individuation, and so th this is something slightly different from simply personalization. And so the theories you will find behind that are, in my opinion, for individualization behaviorism, is, is, which is very good. I mean, if you take uh, Megger, he has developed the CRI, the Criterion reference instruction, which is absolutely brilliant in order to develop adaptive learning programs. Uh, and, and behaviorists have been absolutely essential to the development of competency standards. 
that are currently used in order to provide uh, qualification. When you want to do acquisition of prior learning, for example, being able to have competency standards is absolutely critical. You know, there is a lot of bad uh, things said about behaviorists, but people don't understand that a lot of good things we have today is thanks to behaviorists. Personalization, on the other hand, requires that the learner is involved in the construction process of, of knowledge. Knowledge is not something which is given to the learner. The learner is actively contributing to the construction of knowledge. Hence, the link with user-generated contents, because if the learner is producing new knowledge or reinterpreting knowledge, this is content that can be used as learning resources for learners in, in the future. And for individuation, I see social constructivism and, and trans-individuation. Trans-individuation is a concept developed by Bernard Stiegler, a French philosopher, uh, who is also a professor at Goldsmiths University in the UK, in London. And he says that trans-individuation does not rest on the I of the individual or the inter-individuated we, but the process of co-individuation within a pre-individuated milieu and in which both the I and the we are transformed. So individuation is different from personalization individuation in the sense that you take into consideration that the I is transforming the we. And so it's not just the person defining his or her objective. Uh, of course, the person is defining her uh, own objective, but this is placed into a broader picture where we know that while defining your own objective, you are also defining objective for other. By transforming yourself, you would be also transforming others, and the other transforming themselves will also transform yourself. So how do we portfolio or could the portfolio connect to trans individuation? Anyhow, individuation, co-individuation or trans individuation happen. No, you don't need technology for that. Or, or well, you don't need digital technology because there is always a technology behind individuation. But digital technology can facilitate or hinder this process of individuation. Uh, remember earlier, I uh, made the difference between systems, environment, and infrastructures. You know, systems being something closed, environment something more open, and infrastructure, what I call generative infrastructure that could create environments, new environments that could be spawned by generative infrastructure. So when you look at the portfolio, you find different kind of e portfolio. You will find e portfolio systems, usually something which is owned by an institution or a community. It could be a learning community, a professional community. In the UK, for example, the Institute for Learning has a portfolio for further education teachers. School universities have, have portfolios. Uh, regions also are, de are developing uh, portfolios. But usually they are closed systems uh, within a, a certain area. And when you have a portfolio within that community, this portfolio is within that community. If we want to move into more personalized, uh, we need to have e-portfolio environments. That is, uh, the ability for e-portfolio to exchange information with others, but under the control of the individual. And so for individuation, you need to go one step further, where there is a proper uh, infrastructure which facilitate the exchange in, of information and the control of personal data uh, beyond the individual environments. So the ownership of ePortfolio, which is another way to look at things, if you look at ePortfolio system, they are usually owned by institutions, ePortfolio environments, they will be owned by individuals, and e-portfolio infrastructure, they will be co-owned 
by individuals. I want to take a very simple example to make the difference between environment and infrastructures and the need for infrastructure that environments in, in the sense I define here is not sufficient. Typically, when you produce a piece of evidence that you, you put in your portfolio, this piece of evidence is shared with someone. And the idea of personal data is not something which is totally accurate because data, when you produce data, it has been pro most of the time it has been produced by, with someone in, in relation to someone. So the piece of evidence, for example, if you have a testimony about your competency, this testimony has been produced by the person providing the testimony. And so this testimony is a piece of evidence for the person providing the testimony, and it is a piece of evidence for the person to whom this testimony has been provided to. So what we need is to have this piece of evidence shared among others. But if you take your portfolios today, basically the piece of evidence will be either in one or the other, or it will be duplicated. Uh, if we want to have an infrastructure, if we want to, to have a system where it is possible to share a piece of evidence and other things across a number of individuals, organizations, we need to have an adequate infrastructure that personally portfolio environments are not able to provide uh, today. So when you look at the portfolio uh, as a whole, it needs to cover this big picture. You know, I'm not going to discuss that in detail now, but uh, the portfolio is about reflection and action. It is about na narration uh, of the past. It is about the invention of, of the future. And there is this whole dimension of individual and collective and how the I and the we, the me and the us uh, connect. And for that, we need to develop a special infrastructure which is beyond what we have today with the portfolio technology. And individuation of individuals will also lead to individual uh, individuation of technologies. And, and for that, individuation will require digital integrity. That means that we can exist on the internet as a free autonomous subject. Uh, and this requires the ability to control our personal data. So if we look at the situation today of our personal data on the internet, our data is owned by institution, is stored by institution that control our data, being national health service, school, university, uh, a job board, or a service provider. And so what we believe is that we need to free our data from these service providers and put this data in what I call personal public anonymous data stores. And this can be done. Imagine that every individual on the internet is represented by one or more agent. In technology terms, it's called a proxy. It exists, technology exists today, it's not rocket science, and uh, you could create your own proxy quite easily. You need to have a bit of technical knowledge, but it's not rocket science. And imagine that you are represented on the internet through a proxy, through every communication, uh, access to your data will be done through, uh, through your proxy. So if you're on your mobile phone, on your computer, uh, the computer of a friend, you will connect your agent and all the interaction with all the service providers will be uh, through that. And this will provide a means for individuals to control their personal data and to share this personal data in a public and anonymous space. So, as I said earlier, individuation affects individuals and technologies. And uh, what I truly hope is that the individuation of technology will lead to the Internet of Subjects. So, if you are interested, to discuss that, um, we have a conference in London and the individuation and the intent of subject will be something that will be discussed during this conference in July. We, I hope you will be also able to discuss that uh, with uh, Wolfgang. We had numerous discussions with Wolfgang over Skype and uh, I'll meet him next week uh, to continue this discussion.
because we have a, a meeting in, in uh, Freiburg. So I hope you appreciated this uh, little presentation. And I wish you a good, uh, clever Bildungsgipfel.